Hey guys, welcome to Waste Not Wednesday. We go live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Mountain Time and we take junk, thrifted items, make them over, turn them into home decor that we sell in our shop at jamierayvintage.com and in our retail store here in Lehigh. We have two big projects instead of a bunch of little projects today. Yep. This was an urn that nobody wanted at the thrift store because it was broken. Zeb already repaired it with Bondo, so it's ready for paint. Almost ready. I'm going to show you one thing. Okay, and then that cloth that Zeb has, I think a lot of people pass it up because it's kind of dated with the gold plastic. -y uh, yeah, it's got parts. like these plasticky silver, gold, I don't know what they are, but they are plastic. One fell off. Um, I'm going to fix that and give this kind of like a Scandinavian Mora clock look. I'm going to be using some of our stencils to do that and some salt wash and make, maybe make them raise. So this is getting a full, complete makeover. So I was going to show you what he did to repair this urn that nobody wanted because that's one of our tricks when we're thrifting is we buy the things that are broken that nobody, a lot of people that are resellers are not upcyclers. So if it's not something they can just flip as is, they just move past it. And that's where I feel like our sweet spot is because we can pick up the things other people are passing and turn them into a profitable item. Okay, so you can see where the Bondo is here. It's this different gray color right here, and it's kind of smoother. Um, these were completely gaping big holes in the fiberglass. This is fiberglass. Um, this is texture that was in the mold. That's on purpose. That's part of the mold. It's got a crack down on the bottom. So I did not repair that. It's meant to look like old age stone. We're going to give it a fun paint job, but this Bondo is very smooth and not textured. I have two little small files that I just come in here. I left some of this instead of sanding it all down. And I just come in here and kind of add back some of those details. And this is just a little round file. I have a square flat one here. If I get like a little crease or crack I need to do, and I'm not going to go crazy on it. I just want to kind of add a little bit of that detail back. Um, and this, I think this file set was like $5 down at Harbor Freight, something like that. It came with like six or seven of these little files. They work great for tiny little detail work like this. I use them on wood. I use them on metal. Um, they did, they've been really handy to have. And they're so cheap. If, you, if they get dull, I just go get a new set. But just adding this little detail back in and i wasn't super careful with the bondo because i was mostly concerned about filling that gap filling that hole so that this would be structural again which we got the bondo's been sitting on here for i actually did that about a month ago <laughs> sometimes it takes us I, a lot of people think we're super fast at getting things done some projects take us a little longer sometimes we mentally like just put them off do you guys ever do that like you're like i could fix this but i don't want to all right, so I think that's going to be enough. It's got a couple cracks and dings, but it's going to be enough once we get it painted. It will still have some detail. It won't just look completely flat. Um, Lori, you could use Bondo or uh, li is it liquid wood or whatever. Plastic oh, wood. Plas plastic, plastic wood. wood to fix your box. Either or. Yeah, plastic wood works okay. I prefer Bondo. I feel like Bondo it is just more chemically and requires a little bit more skill. So it yeah. kind of depends on your skill set. Um, and we have videos on how to like do the Bondo and whatnot, but yeah. it, it definitely is something you have to do in a well ventilated area. You have to mix it up just right. So it sets up. So I mixed up um, blue hills and gray skies like two weeks ago. I painted like 4 billion things with it. Cause this paint just goes a long 4 way. Billion. I don't know. I probably painted like 10 projects with it already. I still have some left. Um, this is the cottage color paint. It is rated for outdoors. Um, I wouldn't leave it in the weather full time. It will eventually wear off like anything painted, but it is rated for outdoors. And I think somebody will plant in this. So I'm going to stick kind of with a cottage color line, maybe with a little patina going on. Um, and that's where we're headed with this. So let's, let's get going. One of the things I like about the cottage color, it's an all in one. So you paint, uh, you, you clean and then you can paint. You don't have to worry about only painting in one direction. You don't have to worry about like sealing it afterwards. It's just a clean and paint application. The only thing that I say you probably need to do more prep with is if it's super shiny, then you might want to lightly sand it or, or use a primer or greasy. But like in this case, this is definitely just a clean and paint application. So like, I'm not just because it has a sealer built in does not mean it's a stain blocker yeah yeah if there's like staining or anything like that you might need a primer but for most applications it's a one and done it's nice that you don't have to buy a ton of different products 
to use it. And this already has so much texture. There's really no reason for me to like try to do salt wash or anything else because it already has it. So I'm just going to do a messy paint finish on this because it's porous. It's really going to cover well in one coat. And then we'll come back and do a white wash with the white linen. I'm going to add a little bit of faded burlap just to cream up my white linen so it's not quite so stark, but not so much that I'll have to worry about the top coat. What so, colors are you using, Vip? I'm, I'm going to go... You need some yellow. I want to go... So Scandinavian colors can be like more of like a bright boho look, but they also can be very like soft and muted and aged. Um, especially on like the more clocks, you see a lot of really light pastel blues, um, really light, uh, like cream colors mixed with those blues. Let's see, I think somebody asked what this planner is made of. I think it's like a textured resin. It's not as heavy. It's not like cement, but it's um, not like just plastic. Either. It's fiberglass. Fiberglass. That's what it yeah. is. There you go. And it's got a textured... It's almost got like a textured cement finish over the fiberglass. Yeah, so they probably had a mold that they had a cement something or other like that first, and then they added the uh, the texture. I'm taking this clock all the way apart because I'm going to paint this backer too. So I, I love the mixture of the blue off. hills and the gray skies because it's just a nice smoky blue. You guys might be tired of seeing it, but I mixed it up in a red Solo cup, so I really do need to use it up before it dries up. And that's part of Waste Not Wednesday. We typically... We'll just use whatever paint we have on hand left over from other projects. Oh, that just comes off. Okay. So I'm not going to, that's convenient because now I don't have to worry about getting paint on that backer. Okay. My clock is apart. It's time to get some paint on there. Can you take the glass out or no? Um, it's, it's like glued in oh. and it's glued and nailed. So All I'm right, going to clean it. Yeah. I'm just going to clean the glass. Can you we see know that? How. Okay. Are there any to... dark blue green paints that you were finished with in the DIY line? We do have some darker colors coming out in cottage color. So stay tuned for that. Um, uh, we just don't have them released as of yet. We're going to be testing some of the new colors that we met, like just for like prototypes, deciding what shades to use probably in today's video. That's going to go up. Well, tomorrow's video that we're filming today. So our Thursday video, we're doing some thrift flips and we're going to try out some samples. We don't have like official colors yet for the new releases, but DIY carries some darker colors. I love Hey Sailor is a great dark blue. Monet's Garden is kind of like a forest green. So there are some shades there that work well. Kathleen says, I'm here for all the videos. She has possibly a broken foot. Oh no. That is a, like no fun. So this clock, I didn't show you because I already had it out. It does have a pendulum, but it's got like this chintzy, it's it's like cardstock that someone printed an RA and customized it on. I'm going to paint over that and we're going to use some of these stencils to really, I'm, I'm going to put this in the center to really tie it in and bring it home. Is this the Folklorico? I think it is. Stencil. But it's got a great folk art look. Like, look at all those fun florals. Yeah, make sure if you guys are wanting First Crush, the milk paint color of the month, you get that ordered uh, by the 29th because it is going, the 35% off ends at jamierayvintage.com at midnight on the 29th of February, not the standard time. So if you haven't scored that deal, make sure to snag it. Sorry, I thought I was ready, but, you know, as always, got to go run grab some things. Uh, it is the Folk Colorico Stempsel, and this is the Folk Art, Folk Swag. Folk Swag, I'm going to be using that. And then I have, this is an older stencil. Do we even still? Uh, floral Corners. I don't yeah. know, it was one of the first stencils I developed. This I don't is, know if we this still is have it. Floral Corners, but it, I really love kind of like this area here with these little petals. And we're going to maybe do something with that down in the corners. I don't know yet. I am. I've been fighting a cold for like a month and I'm, I think I finally caught up with these. So if I seem a little less peppy, that's why I'm not sad. I'm not upset. I'm just a little under the weather. I thought I was getting sick. Like people are like, you're sick all the time. It's like my body tries to get sick and then I wake up and I feel fine. That's happened like six times, I think, since the beginning of the year, but I think it finally caught me. 
Also, it's cold and flu season. Who's yeah. not who's not sick all the time? Unless you're yeah. just like not well, seeing. Well, some people anyone. get sick and then they're sick for like days and days and days and days. And I'm like starting to get sick, go to bed, wake up, and I'm fine. So today I woke up and I was not as fine as I wanted to be. All right. So I've got crinoline here that I'm adding to my salt wash. And I actually want it to be a little thinner. We are going to go for a textured look, but I'm going to add some color back in. Crinoline is like a light yellowy cream it, it's it's not like real yellow it leans towards yellow as far as cream goes whereas sandy blonde is part part probably more of like a uh, brownish tan cream that's the difference between the the diy crinoline and the diy sandy blonde one's a brown tone one's a yellow tone i'm going to come in and pull out anywhere where the paint is kind of puddling up just so that way it'll dry faster sometimes it puddles up in the corners because the next I'm going to come in with some of the copper patina. And then last will be a white wash over the top. And then this will be done. It's really not going to take you that long. Okay. So these accents here are like a plasticky chrome on here. I'm just going to take, this is just some 220. And I'm going to just oh, give Deb, them a I think scuff. I hit the camera. Camera's out. Oh, no. Shoot. That's why I'm never allowed to walk forward. Sorry. Just a second. How long has that been there like that? I just walked up, so just barely. Just a minute. We are fixing things. That's why Zeb doesn't let me walk in the front. Although, in my defense, he has done it before. Okay. Sydney said Jamie did it again. Zeb did it once, too. Once. <laughs> I've got one one under my belt. I'm I've never admitted to not making mistakes. <laughs> All right, can you guys see me now? Can you see me? All right, so I think you missed it. I'm just taking 220 grit over this sand, this glossy, plasticky chrome accents that are on here. They're awful. I don't know why they're here. They they look like they used to be gold, and they the gold is worn off, and now they're like kind of silvery. I'm just sanding them because I want the paint to stick real well. I don't want to really see a lot of that chrome coming through. A little bit might come through because I'm not 100% sanding them down. They're plastic underneath that. So I'm just making sure I don't have any drips anywhere. All right. So this is kind of got some, I added the salt wash, but then I also added some water. The nice thing about the salt wash, it's a texture medium, 100%. That's what it does. Everybody gets hung up on the salt factor of it. Do you need it. some of this? No, not, sure? not yet. Maybe later. All right, because I still have some more. I'd really love to use it up too. But that's just part of uh, like what they use to make it. It's supposed to give you like a sea salty. Wash well, I was like, look. when people ask us for the like the exact ingredients of like if we gave you the exact ingredients, then also they're on the can. I don't know. I don't know though. Like we don't know them, <laughs> and it's proprietary. It's like asking like exact measurements of what's in paint. <laughs> Okay, so I'm not masking this glass off. I'll come back through with a razor blade. Takes about two minutes to clean that up. I'm gonna heat gun this a little bit. I actually add a little more salt wash. I got, maybe added too much water. I want it to be a little thicker than that. Just a hair. It's supposed to be a one to one ratio. I play around with the ratios all the time. Sometimes I do it thicker, sometimes I do it thinner. It just really adds a fun texture to your piece. And you can go as heavy textured or as light textured as you want, or no texture at all, and just do the paint straight on there. The paint I'm does not require it. Color. Sorry. Oh, you're good. You don't have to do this at home. Just walk away and do laundry or dishes and come back. Or oh. watch a TV show and do nothing. Yeah, also an option. I just want to really get this dry before I put the copper on. You can use Big Top for decoupage, Karen. Um, it doesn't work as well, uh, especially the thicker the decoupage paper. Like if you're using rice paper, the liquid patina is definitely your better option. If you're using <laughs> napkins or our tissue paper, then I would say Big Top or Sweet Pickens Final Finishes would also work. But when you're at when any time you're doing like thicker, heavier papers, it's always better to use the liquid patina because it's thicker 
And the other thing that you'll notice the difference between Big Top and Liquid Patina is Liquid Patina has a much longer open time and Big Top, you better work fast or else you're gonna rip your paper. Yeah, it is, you can use it, but like I said, it, you need to use a lot of it and it might not like suck it down as well just because it's thinner. So I'm gonna get a quick sloppy coat of this on. This is my texture medium. I encourage brush strokes and things like that at this point. Like that's what I want to see. That's why I'm using the texture medium to add detail and little creases and places for dark wax and white wax to sit down in. So in this case, I'm using cottage color. It's self-leveling. As much texture as this piece has on it, you won't even see brush strokes. No. It's very porous, so it's soaking the paint in. It's not just sitting on top. Um, if something's shiny, sometimes you'll see brush strokes only because you need to do multiple coats. But in this case, it's very textured and it's just sitting down in all the nooks and crannies. If it didn't have texture, I would definitely have to add salt wash because it would be super boring. But when you find pieces like this, using cottage color is so great because you already have the texture of the piece. You've got the sealer built in and it's just going to make this project super simple. You know, I so the, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to paint the lip. The reason we use salt wash and we're not over here making our own formula, because I've been at the thrift store and I've seen people make their own formula Ooh, baking soda? and it's like on candlesticks and stuff. It, I feel like that changes the property of the paint. It just doesn't adhere as well. It's always chipping off and flaking off and you can do it. And I've seen some people get really good results with it. But the nice thing about the salt wash and the reason we keep going back to it is because it doesn't change how your paint adheres to a piece and it doesn't change the color. It just adds texture. If anything, texture. it makes it adhere better. Yeah. And it's just a more professional looking finish, in my opinion. You can tell when somebody's just used baking soda or whatever. Yeah, we see it all the time in the thrift store. If you're not really worried, if it's just something you're doing for yourself and you're just putting it on a vase or whatever, you can do it. But if you're going to resell, you want nice, professional looking finishes. All right, I got that lip done. There's actually still um, some planting material. <laughs> inside There's some of this. dirt in there? Yeah. <laughs> that's I'm just, wondering. That's just extra bonus texture yeah you don't need a lot of the liquid patina you probably had some left over from your craft kit if you need something shipped fast just email info at jamierayvintage.com and we can we can generally move orders ahead we can try it kind of depends on how busy we are and what's going on but right now if you email caitlin and it's like an emergency situation every now and we then can... we'll have someone be like hey i was expecting this and it didn't show up and i had to i'm doing a class and we or they run out of paint and we the try to help you out if we can we're refinishers too, and so we know how. And sometimes is. there's a little extra cost in expediting, depending on how you want your shipping to look, because we usually just ship first class. So. Well, we first class, or we ship like two to three day. It is it is actually ridiculous to try to ship overnight. Anybody that says they want overnight, when we look at how much it's going to cost extra, very seldom do people ever want to pay it. Yeah, they're like, no, nope, never mind. <laughs> it's, it's, it wasn't it's that. Like it wasn't that dire. Expensive. I'll live with the cabinets half painted for a couple days. <laughs> Thank you, Caitlin. She just dropped that info at Jamie Ray Vintage email. We have um, Zeb and I. If you're new here, Zeb and I do not handle the shipping unless we have people out, or if we get behind, we'll go in. We have a full team of shipping. We have three. Well, two full-time and one almost full-time employee that kind of handle the shipping and Caitlin's a full-time customer service. And that really helps us because we're, we're, we're making a lot of content. If we had I would to, say Caitlin's also tech, tech support. Oh yes, Caitlin's <laughs> also tech support. But I'm just saying like, she helps out with the website stuff. If you had to wait on us, we wouldn't be as reliable because we're so busy doing a bunch of well, other things. We, we get a lot of messages and Caitlin, we miss things. Like we don't see messages sometimes because we get so many. And someone will get a message from people be like, hey, I messaged you four days ago and haven't heard. And we're like, oh, sorry, we didn't see it. <laughs> Caitlin, Caitlin says, Caitlin is full time to do a lot of things. Yeah. But customer care is her number Caitlin one. Caitlin wears lots of hats. We are a small business. I don't think there's anybody that just does one thing. Like our, our full time shipping employees are actually our retail shop employees. They do receiving sometimes when Ivy's not in. Uh, Zeb and I. <laughs> Deb and I do, we were talking to our accountant because we were going to try to like pay ourselves. He's like, well, you have to pay yourself like a reasonable wage for what you do. And I'm like, um, I can't, can't afford, afford myself. Us. I can't afford myself for what we I'm, can't afford ourselves currently. Working. So there we go. 
because we do all the design work for our wholesale products and whatnot. All right, I'm just kind of, kind of hitting up these details with this copper. I'll flip that around so you guys can see what I'm doing. I might have to heat gun up top to do some copper and then I'll do the wash over the top. Yeah, Caitlin says messaging on social media is never a great way. Email when you email she Caitlin, she system. has a ticket system. So unless you type in the wrong email, nothing gets lost in email. The problem with social media messaging is it gets that buried. It gets buried because, like in stories, if anybody responds to a story, it goes in my messaging. So you can imagine with 150,000, especially on Facebook, 150,000 followers on Facebook. Sometimes I get a lot of responses to my online stories that I do, and it can easily get buried, even though I try really hard to go through it once a day. So email is best because then that goes to Caitlin. All right, so we got this nice creamy crinoline on here. That's going to be a perfect base. And then I'm going to start, I'll probably do one more coat. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do because I'm going to do these raised stencils. Um, I could just put them on regular without raising them. Might I might do that. I might do one more coat of this, get it on here real well, because um, this was pretty slick and shiny, like gloss finish on this wood. Do one more coat of the salt wash finish with the crinoline, and that's going to give me some good texture. And then I might just do regular stenciling. That might be easier, and then it'll be less dry time too. Did you guys see how fast this urn is going, pulling together? This is what happens when you find a piece that just has a great starting point. Like I didn't have to do multiple coats of cottage color because I wanted some of that to come through. The texture is already amazing. So I didn't have to add a step like that. When you guys are thrifting, really look at what you're working with. We can make almost anything look better. I mean, at least I like to think so, but there's sometimes there's a lot of stuff. Beauty's involved. in the eye of the beholder, right? It looks better to me. Caitlin says she usually answers within 48 biz business hours. Yes, she is really good. And if Caitlin's ever out, we have uh, other employees that are cross-trained. Like next week she's going on, or next month, she has a fun vacation set up with her kids and Aunt Mary Beth. And so Ivy will take over and she fully knows how to handle all the emails and everything. I even know how to get into her email and have a few times but, but we don't we don't like jamie in the emails <laughs> if i'm having a saucy day you don't want me responding to you let's just say caitlin is much better we all have our skills i try to be nice caitlin caitlin's able to pull all the emotion out of it she didn't paint that piece <laughs> well the other thing too is like i sometimes get frustrated because i don't understand what people mean I'm not even good when I have to, like Zeb usually calls. If we need tech support or need to get warranty repair work, it's usually Zeb that goes, because I try to be patient, but it's not my forte. Thank you, Michelle. She said she's only ordered once, but she said our staff did great, and she's a fan of our business. We're not perfect. We make mistakes, but we do our best. So I'm just drying this paint off because I want to add some more patina in a few different areas and it's still not quite dry. So I feel like this is always already, even with one coat of the paint on here, way better than it was before, just because that silver did not, it was very chintzy and cheap looking to me. It did not go well, those accents with gold? that. No, it's like a silvery gold. It's not even gold oh. anymore. It's like faded off. Somebody I don't know. just asked about my base color. I used Blue Hills, probably like six parts Blue Hills to one part gray skies um, in cottage color. It just makes it kind of a smoky blue instead of the bright blue that Blue Hills is. Blue Hills is beautiful on its own, but if you want it to just be a little bit more toned back, adding some gray skies will do that and deepen it up. All right, I'm about to put a second coat on here. Stay tuned for the magic that will happen later. <laughs> Kaylin says she takes a step away if something's frustrating. 
true story. We also have to remind ourselves that there are like are no paint. There's no real paint emergencies. Sometimes when you're dealing with the general public, sometimes they're not even upset about what they're telling you they're upset about. Sometimes there's something going on behind the scenes and a little compassion and kindness and just patience really goes a long way. And we've actually had some people say, oh, I'm sorry, I, you know, I, it really wasn't this. I had something else going on. I appreciate it, you know, all kinds of things. <laughs> Caitlin says, Jamie has said since the beginning to me, there's no paint emergencies. I now use that in other aspects of my life. It is so true. I was talking with my stencil manufacturer the other day, and I'm like, there's no stencil emergencies. It's not a life or death situation. You do want to give it the attention it deserves, but you need to consider, consider what you're dealing with. It's why we do what we do, because I used to do mortgages, and there are definitely mortgage emergencies. Single largest investment in people's life, it can be pretty stressful. Usually people are pretty happy to be painting. Although every now and then. Can be therapeutic. Every now and then it surprises me. But, you know, like I said, usually there's something else going on behind the scenes. Let's see, how far does this come down? Need to make sure I'm painting up high enough. Okay. Uh, Kathy says, I got little black dressing, Greyhound. I'm guessing she means gray skies, but can't find the orange. Are you looking for pennies from heaven, the, the patina that I'm using? Or do you want the actual orange? Because this is pennies from heaven. It's a liquid patina. Or you could just type in copper patina. You should be able to find it under that. It has a built-in sealer. Um, it is a little, it's not super, uh, it's, op it's opaque when it's solid. Yeah, I think so. It's not super solid. It's remember. meant to go on the top of stuff. If you want a solid finish. You need to paint it over something else. Oh, yay. Kathy's using her two-tiered tray for her tea supplies. We actually, I think we only have one of those left. If you guys missed it out, we did um, a shop tour yesterday live, and that was kind of fun. We haven't probably been in the shop like that in over a month. It's We've been so busy. We have a bunch of, like, new design work we've been doing, new product lines. Just kind of gets overwhelming. And end, I of, don't, end of cheer season, basketball playoffs. Yeah. Eliza wants to go. It's semifinals, and the JV team isn't cheering anymore because it's varsity. But they still like encourage the girls to come and help cheer the team on and be and support the cheerleaders. And but it's up at uh, University of Utah, I think, is where they're doing the state championship this year. Yeah. And that's half hour away. <laughs> so we'll see if we can get her there tonight. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go second coat of this. This is going to get me 100% full coverage with this salt wash in here. If I had left it thick and haven't watered it down, if you're just joining, I watered it down to begin with the, uh, the salt wash mixture because I didn't want it super thick. I wanted it to glide on here a little better but still get pretty decent coverage. Um, but if I hadn't watered it down and just gone one part salt wash to one part paint, I probably would have gotten close to one coat coverage. There's a few spots I want to come back with a little bit more blue. I'm going to do a wash over this. So I'm going to come this way so I don't knock what over. What color are you using for the wash? You're going to go with a white? White linen mixed with faded burlap just to kind oh. of cream it out a little. Nice. There we go. If you ever kind of, because I, I didn't really do a dry brush, but I didn't, I didn't do full coverage, obviously, on the copper. If you're ever in a spot and you're like, you know what, that's like a little too much here or there, don't feel like you can't come back. And just change it up. Like, it's not a big deal. It's just paint. Layer it. That's how you get faux effects. You got to keep layering and be patient. And also, don't have set expectations of exactly the way that it's going to turn out. Kaylin's dropping some links to orange. If you can't find the colors you're looking for, like I said, you can always email info at jamierayvintage.com. Explain what you want. We'll help you find it. Okay, she dropped Firestarter and Summer Crush. And I think she's probably already dropped it, but she could drop the um, copper patina link. We actually sell a tremendous amount of this copper patina. I know you're probably not surprised. We use it a lot. Thank you, Caitlin. She's dropped it a few times. All right, so the benefit 
a lot of your old antique type pieces <clears throat> have more than one paint job on them. And the benefit of using the salt wash is you can simulate that in one coat if you thin it out like I did. Or two coats, I guess. I'm doing two coats on this, but... So this went from shiny, yellow, orangey looking oak to this nice, creamy, been painted. And then we're gonna add the, uh, the stencils to give it kind of a Scandinavian folk art look. Kind of similar to a Moore clock. Not all Moore clocks are standing. They used to do like a shelf sitter and they've done some wall hanging clocks. Um, so there are smaller ones out there, which is kind of the inspiration on this piece. Zeb's using crinoline. I just brought out like a random bucket of paint that has like a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And so it's that's just, what we're working this from. This is said random bucket. <laughs> it's like all the leftovers, the last, it's kind of like uh, that Afghan you found at the bins yesterday. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's, it's like, like so every, random. someone had like a bunch of odds and ends yarn left over and they made a huge Afghan out of it. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see which has less paint in it. Would you mind opening that one? Yes, I can. Okay, the Blue Hills is two different colors, Caitlin. It is Blue Hills and um, Gray Skies mixed together. And then I used Copper Patina, and I'm about to mix a uh, white linen with a little bit of faded burlap. The clay paint is so pigmented that if you add just a little bit, it doesn't really mess with the sealer property, so then you don't have to worry about, oh, I got to seal over the top of it. So if you ever need to make a color in the cottage color line, and you have DIY paint, you can absolutely add a little bit of that to change the color and you're still gonna have that built-in sealer. It's almost like, it works almost like a dye. Yeah, it's literally like adding straight up pigment. Okay, so I've got the teeniest, tiniest dab of faded burlap in here. So I'm gonna just fill this up with white linen and water and I'm gonna make a wash. So I had a little bit of this, a little bit of that. This is perfect for waste on Wednesday. When you don't really have enough paint to finish a project, think of what you could mix it with to turn it into a new color or to turn it into a wash. And even this, the little dab that's left in there, I'm not gonna throw that away because if I have to stencil, that little bit of paint will actually go a really long way. Okay, I'm gonna add some water to this. Somebody just asked what salt wash is. Salt wash is an additive that you can mix into pretty much any paint to create texture. So we use it with the paint products we carry, but if you already have paint, you can mix it in. You could also like water it down, put it on glass, make like a sea salt effect. And it just gives you texture on a piece that has no texture. Pamela says we call that stash busting when you're just using up stash busting. random like parts it. of your stash. <clears throat> so faded burlap, white linen, water. And if you really wanted this to be extra, you could also use final finishes and matte. We use that on our dining table outside. It's not rated for outdoors, but we just looked at it the other day and it's held it It's had well snow sitting on it most of the winter because it's on the north side of the house, so it doesn't melt very fast and it's fine. Yeah. I was all, oh, I'm going to have to redo that top and nope, it's not, not happening. Okay. I might have to add more water to this. Okay, good enough. I'm chasing all these. I'm... Yeah, it's not it's not thin enough, so I got to get a cup of water. So the difference between DIY paint and the paint frosting, paint frosting is going to make your paint thicker but it's a smoother type finish. You can stipple it. Yeah. Whereas like salt wash, it's not going to be a thick, smooth. It gives finish. you more it's of like a, a plaster. Finish. Yeah. It gives you more of like a plaster type texture with the salt wash. You can get paint frosting to do a lot of similar things, right? But it's just not the thing. The paint frosting works really fast in the cottage colors. Oh like, yeah. You got to be ready. and only You got to be ready to paint because your paint's going to... It just keep. It's almost like it reacts, and it just keeps. It like dries it out almost. Yeah. Oops. Sorry, I'm making this. So mix in a separate container. It does work really, really well, um, but it does react quickly, and you so you want to use it up fast. This will mimic the look of what would happen if this was in the weather for a long time, you know, like a white oxidized finish. 
It's also going to make that blue look less brand new. Because, I mean, we got a big split. Like, this is a 100-year-old cement urn over here. And that's part of the design. This is not... This is not a broken part over here. I'll flip it around when Jamie's done painting it so you can see. And I'm adding more water to make it move for this wash. So if you start to do a wash and it's not just like actively flowing, then that's when you need to add water to move it on your brush. Do you make your own salt wash? Um, not really. It requires chemicals that you need to buy in bulk. Um, people say they make it. You can look it up, but it's not going to be the same. And I cannot confirm or deny what homemade stuff does because I don't use it. And I'm just saying that because this is what I sell. I'm just saying I only can testify to the products that so I So before we ever carried any kind of paints or salt wash, we, we, tried. we made a lot of our own products. And we're like, you know what? They've already cracked the formula. By the time I buy all the stuff to make it anyway and take my time and energy and the mix isn't quite what I want, I already had something better in this. So we just stick with that. Well, and it can be dangerous. Like a lot of people like to make their own chalk paint. First of all, you're just changing the properties of the paint. You can't like latex is latex is latex. But some of the things you have to put into it are not good for you to be like breathing in as you're mixing. So you need to be careful about that. Always be mindful. I don't ever want you to think you can only use the products that we use. But I can't tell you about other products that I don't know. And we pretty much just use the products that we sell because we want to be experts on the things that we use. So that doesn't allow for time to try every product under the sun. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I always tell people they'll call us and be like, well, I bought this at Home Depot. Do you know how it works? And I'm like, call Home Depot. <laughs> they probably know better. And chances are they, they probably don't have somebody online to help you. It's just kind of the difference between like a big and a small company. But the information is pretty much out there for everything. All right. This looks like it's very like covered, covered with the white. But as the white dries, it will be more translucent. And those base colors will pop back. So don't stress. I'm gonna have to get up on my stool here and hit this inside. I'm not painting all the way inside because that'll be planted in there. And then oh I almost forgot to do a second coat on this. All right, we're almost ready to stencil on my end. I'm it's gonna start coming home here. I'm almost done. So I, I can know, help you. I know you are. We'll have to. <laughs> You can do... I took the easy project. I'm like, I'm not feeling 100% today, so I'm doing the, the easy one. All right, I'm going to... We don't have a washcloth in the drawer. So just add it to paint. Yeah, so you can add it to any paint. I'm just telling you, I don't, I've never added it to anything besides DIY products and milk paint. So I know you can, I do not know how other paints will react to it. But it says on the can, you can mix it with pretty much any paint to add texture. And I don't see why, as long as it's like a good water-based paint, why it wouldn't work. So I'm just kind of wiping off some of this. Oop. We're losing clock pieces. Just making sure that the coverage is how I want it to be. I don't want it to be perfect because if you make it perfect and all the same, you'll lose a lot of that texture. Oh, yeah. So, and if you get the salt wash, there should be directions on the side. It's generally one part paint to one part salt wash, but you can use less um, than that if you don't want it to be as textured. And you just stir it up and put it on. And the way it adheres to whatever piece you're working on will depend on... Um, what type of paint you start with. So like, I know if I put it with DIY paint, it dries rock solid because that clay and the DIY paint works well with it. Oh, she's asking how to use the no pigment milk paint. So no pigment milk paint, you have to put your own pigment in there. 
So you have to buy pigment and then you can make whatever shade you want to. I really haven't used it a ton. No, Zeb is painting a clock, not a mirror. Sorry, Molly. I thought you were talking about salt wash still. I can get some more specific information for you if you email Caitlin. And I, I'll get with the manufacturer. Because while I haven't used it a ton, I've only ever used it once. I mixed it with uh, DIY's making powders. And it worked pretty good. I know the manufacturer has more information. I'm going to go throw this outside real quick. Whoa. We're going to lose that clock piece before we're done here. I'm just drying this wash, moving the paint a little bit with my heat gun, and it's gonna set down in all these cracks and crevices. You could also, like I used white linen mixed with faded burlap, but this would have also been pretty if I had just watered down crockery mixed with white linen, you could do that too. All right, I gotta cover up this little piece of paper that is on here. Yeah, if you take the milk paint with no pigment and you mix it with other paint, I have no idea what would happen. And I don't know that the manufacturer would know either because I'm pretty sure it's just made to mix with pigment. So that way you can make your own colors. Thanks, Amy. She said that it's pretty. It was a really pretty piece. I really, I think I could have done a lot of different finishes on this. I think I paid $10 for that, even with the break on it. Yeah. I think I could have done a lot of different finishes and they would have all turned out great because it just had really good bones. Have I used salt wash and milk paint? Yes, I have. Yep. It works. It all takes right. a little bit more than DIY paint. DIY paint is super thick to begin with. And I thought I had this all dried and here I am with the heat gun again. Oh, let me fix the camera. There we are. Jamie's hiding back behind her urn today. Sorry. I'll try to push it over the side. Okay, I am almost ready for stenciling on this. It had more moving pieces than I initially thought and more that was going to be visible through this big pane <laughs> of glass. So all our brushes are clean on that we're using today except for the turquoise iris assistant. Um, and we sell them at JanuaryVintage.com. This is an F30. Uh, what's that over there? And this big one here is the R20, and, and this is the this is the O35. They're both. This is like an oval. This is a round bristle. Thanks, Caitlin. She dropped the link to all of our brushes. We also carry the DIY brushes. I don't like using the DIY brushes with cottage color, just because they're a little bit softer. They're really made for blending with the DIY paint. And so I use the cling on a lot with a cottage color. All right, this fits perfect along the edge here. So I am going to start stenciling. I think I'm going to do like a light blue color that I might start off with vintage mint on and use some of Jamie's blue to tone it back, her blue and gray skies. So this is vintage mint from cottage color. Oh, the lid wasn't on tight. Let me see if I can bring that back. That is not vintage mint. It says it's mint, that, vintage mint. That is a bunch of different colors that mixed together. Maybe I'll just try that straight up. I know it's all cottage color. It's probably Blue Hills and vintage oh, mint. It yeah. looks kind of like hate blue, but it's, it ain't hate. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it just broke the spoon. <laughs> Look how thick that is. It's perfect uh, for stenciling. My God, it's a water. You should always put the lids. Clean the lids. Clean the rims of your cottage color because it has built-in sealer. And then put the lid back on. And you can see people use plastic wrap. We are horrible examples of how you should store your paint. Luckily, we use it often enough. We don't ruin too much. I mean, that's not going anywhere. Okay. I'm not going to water it down. I'm going to go for it. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's thick. Maybe, maybe a right, hint I'm going to stop heat gutting because you guys get the point. As it dries, I just want you to see, like, what's this side is pretty dry. Are you going to wax that? Um, like dark no. wax or anything? Nope. Just leave It'll it. It'll get dirty as it lives outside. We're just going to leave it the way it is. I could dark wax it, but wax does melt in the sun. So it I'm eventually, it, it eventually dries out and tones back. 
All right, so this stencil fits perfectly in here. So I'm just gonna go with it. You could do multiple colors on your stencil and I might, we'll see how much time we have. No, we're just gonna swirl. So we carry a few different brushes. I'll talk about them while Deb's stenciling. So we have Klingon. They're probably our most expensive brushes. They're definitely an investment. We carry the DIY brushes. They're amazing for the DIY paint. Debbie specifically made them to work so well with a clay-based paint. Um, we carry the Turquoise Irish Artist brushes. Dion and I are great friends and I love carrying her products. And I use these very much for detail work. And then um, we also use the JRV stencil brushes, which is what Seb's using now. And those are for more than stencils. We use them for waxing. These are all just tools. I <laughs> love to use a stencil brush. Like if I was just going to paint the lip of this, the flat surface, because it's so flat, you could run the paint across a flat surface when you're too toning. And it's so much easier to keep in that area. And then again, for waxing, especially detailed waxing, when I don't want to waste a ton of dark or, or black wax or gold wax, I use a little um, stencil brush to get down in the cracks. You have more control and you use less product. Speaking of dark wax, can you by chance go get me some clear and dark wax and some brushes to go with it? Yes, sir. This this blue, whatever we had mixed, I think it, Jamie's right. It's vintage mint, probably some blue hills. That's a white. I have no idea maybe what that some, is. Maybe some white and some We have straight up, though, that's gray skies. Comment. We probably have straight up vintage mint in here somewhere. You just never know what you're going to find in our paint cabinet. That clear wax is empty. Are you sure you don't have clear wax up there? I do not. I got it. Clear and you want clear and black? Um, I want dark because I've never seen an old clock, Swedish painted clock, that doesn't have a little grime and grunge on it from the years. Okay. So we're gonna do a little distressing, a little aging, simulate years of being wiped down and dusted. And that dust, when it gets wet, you put furniture polish on it, it ends up sitting in the corners, hence the dark wax. We're going to get that going. Okay. Thanks, Donna. She said the piece that I did looks amazing. I tried to make it look good because this is going to cost quite a bit to ship. And I think this particular urn, let's see, I could probably find it, see how much it is on the website. Let me heat in this real quick and then I'll show you so that you guys can see the coloration on it. We paint a lot of urn. There it is. Large garden urn. $249.95. The picture that's still showing on the website is the old one. I'll send this to Kaylin if she wants to try to find the link. Um, shows the damage. So if you go to the link, once Caitlin links this urn, if you click it while we're live, I won't have updated the photo yet. And you can see how bad the damage was that Zeb repaired on this. Thanks, Caitlin. She just dropped the link. So if you're, if you're interested in seeing what this looked like before or you want to buy it, the link is on there. All right. I think I had something on my brush before I started because I have like some fun variation in tone. Once I distress this, that'll go, that'll all blend in. I think I'm going to try to put some small little details on the face here too. Yeah, the clock is already listed too. Let me see if I can find it and I can give you the name so you can find it faster. I'm going to stencil this side real fast. That just, I'm loving how, this, so this is the folk art panel. We use this on like dresser drawers uh totes all kinds of stuff so it's wall clock will be painted caitlin oh she found it so if you guys are just tuning in caitlin also dropped the link to the clock if we're watching live you can see what it looked like before as soon as we're done with this video i will update the photos for both of these items as soon as we're done with this video we're gonna clear all these paints off and start painting some of the stuff that Jen, Jen from, from Rustic, Rustic Rehabs has sent us for our, we're doing kind of a collaboration. We sent her some stuff. And I got to say, we opened her box in yesterday's video at the end and just looked in the top. She sent us good stuff. She sent us, she may have sent us better stuff than we sent her. We, we like sent her Jen. stuff that needs like a full makeover. And she sent us stuff like, maybe we don't even need to paint it. <laughs> I'm like, man, I should have sent some better stuff. The only premise that I gave her was it has to fit in a 16 by 16 by 16 box, which we both have because DIY paint is shipped in that. So I knew she had one. And that was the only rule. I sent her some interesting stuff. <laughs> but your Thursday's video is going to be fun. 
and she'll get her video up on Thursday. We'll link to each other um, so that way you guys can see those. We still went one. to the bins in Thursday's video. We actually did that yesterday because that's when we had time this week to go. But you won't see it till Thursday. We actually probably one of our better hauls yeah, at the bins. Good, we, we got we, we got some good stuff. There. Um, the thing with our video that we put up Thursday, Monday's video is typically just Monday thrifting, right? But Thursday video, we will generally start it Tuesday if we can and be finished by Wednesday. Um, and then we just put it up Thursday. So that way we've got Thursday and Friday it gives us two whole days to do projects that aren't interrupted by um, filming. Occasionally filming for the Jamie and Zeb channel, but like sometimes we have larger projects and it's hard to like get the filming and editing done and larger projects. So it's kind of how we balanced our schedule out. So we really finish all of our filming for the week by the end of Wednesday, most weeks. Um, and then we right don't now have you're getting video till Saturday night. Right now you're getting like two and a half videos a month over on Jamie and Zeb. I'm sorry. We've Febu <laughs> February has been crazy. We have had so many like behind the scenes side projects going that. Oh, do you have that white? I need to paint this. You didn't second coat that right there. Um, yes. Or the there's crinoline. some, there's some crinoline there. I'm seeing that you missed it. Well, and what happened is I used to have editing software and I edited all the Jamie Ray vintage videos on my phone, which enabled me to edit the do uh, to actually do the other projects and film them. And now I'm just like scrambling to get Ad them done. Adobe. If you know anybody over there, you can let them know. I'm not pleased with it. Uh, Adobe has their rush program that I used to edit with was really great quality on my phone. It no longer works and editing on the computer is a whole nother world. Okay. So I got my two sides. I think I'm going to do a little bit on the front. <laughs> Jen says, I don't have a schedule this sophisticated. So give me grace for tomorrow. What we'll do Jen is we'll tell people that we're going to put the link in the description whenever Jen gets it done. And if people don't like that, then. That's life, man. Creative people are not, we, we do what we do. Can you even see that on there? I would say just creative minds are, are rarely tidy. We got a lot of tabs open. And so having things are exactly kind of hard. A lot of tabs hard. open on your search bar. Yeah, a lot of tabs are open on my brain. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you should when see I, my when search I bar right now. Jen, I was like, listen, we're not going to make this too complicated. We're not going to have a, like a, a hard and fast time schedule on it. And that's why I knew this would be good with Jen because Jen is just as chill as we are. Okay. Can you have you checked with Adobe? Uh, yeah, we yeah. I've sent them a few things, but they they're busy. They're a big enough company. What would you like me to do? Paint I this? need that heat gun so I can stencil this because this is where the pendulum swings and that's going to be seen. Oh, okay. Where the, oh, can you go back? I just need a heat gun. No, you have the heat gun. Oh, you put yours way over there. What do I do? I'm still oh. using mine. Okay. All right. All right, I'm going to switch up stencils. This is this corner stencil. I don't know what Jamie called it. Floral corner. I don't know. The next channel member live video will be um, Tuesday. We usually do it like kind of every other Tuesday, unless there's five Tuesdays in a month. But All right. last, like last week we did it on Tuesday. So this Tuesday we didn't do it. We'll do it next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Occasionally, if we have a vacation or something going on, we'll change it, but that's how we do it. Okay, because I know the gal that owns the stencil company, I'm going to trim this real close so that I can get my border right up against the edge here. If you need to do this, feel free. I mean, these are like industrial stencils. They're super thick and can probably hold up to a little bit of cutting. Just know that uh, this is off label, I'm not recommending you cut your stencils all up. All right, now I can get that into that corner real tight. Okay, I'm gonna go with this. Should I switch colors or should I stick with this blue? I think this light blue is gonna be the, the win on this. Whatever. Because I'm gonna dark. It's like a paste. <laughs> this, no, it's 1056. I know. I'm hurrying. Hey, I guess, Lynn, if you need to go, because we're going to go over, I, I'm done. So I can watch comments. And you're also sick and probably going to go back to bed when we're done here. <laughs> I got. I wish you could video. go back to bed. We. I think the video will film quick, though. You got a little on the bottom of that. Oh, you're That's, get oh I've got a lot. Bottom. That's okay. It's all getting distressed. I'll fix it when I distress it. It's fine. What we'll do, what we normally do is like 
the video that we're filming later today. We'll get started and we'll get base coats on everything and then I'll go nap while it paint dries. Usually I do like laundry or design work or work stuff in between, but if I don't feel good, I just paint, nap, paint, nap. Okay, I like these little flowers on the side of this stencil. So I'm gonna, let me show you, can you see? I don't know if it'll focus, the little ones. So I'm just gonna kind of work them up the side here. We do this all the time. We just use elements of a stencil that we need instead of using the whole piece sometimes, especially on like the grain sack ones. Sometimes, oh, there's there's one stencil that says uh, made in USA or something like that. It's Debbie's because her paint's made oh. in the USA. Well, anyway, I stole the made in USA off of that one. I was using that a ton the other day. I'm like, listen, I'm painting this in the USA. We're going with it. It's funny because like if we need a nap or like Caitlin said she might take a siesta later, she's just getting over being sick. We'll usually text each other because usually like there's like a conversation thread that happens all day long between us and Caitlin and Ivy. And so we'll just be like, hey, we're napping. So just know there's going to be a delay. And then yeah. we text the gals at the shop too because sometimes somebody will come in and they'll need something. So it's good for them to know like we're going to put our phone away or whatever. We don't work all the time. Just a lot of the time. Do you want me to? I could wipe that off, I guess. I'm going to use it on the other side and flip it. Alicia says, my husband has told people for years that my brain keeps too many tabs. My worst, like, thing that I do, my kids can't stand it. They'll come to my phone and, like, I guess you're supposed to close out your, like, tabs or it whatever. Does, it does help it. She has, like, hundreds <laughs> open sometimes. Hundreds. And that's not even all my internet tabs. That's just apps that I haven't ever closed. There we go. Done. <laughs> Every now, Eliza's the worst at it. She'll get your phone and she'll like automatically start closing your tabs. Okay. All I right. Need... You want me to stencil this for you? Yeah, that's why I put it there. Okay. Here Brush, we can, paint. We can share. Too. I'm just going sticking with the so blue. So I'm wondering, should we do this darker? Do the dark one. Yeah. Do the, your darker color here. Yeah. That's what I think. Just give a little contrasty situation where did I put my stencil brush oh here we are sure you want me to stencil your project I'm not as good as you you are great I 100% trust you to do an amazing job it's a lot of trust 100% how 100%. about if we do like 95% I mean it won't matter you're I can do doing... slightly above average that's what you're getting today I'll take it it's in the back there's gonna be a pendulum in front of it right yep and I'm gonna distress it like Stress Distressing all. hides a multitude of painting imperfections. Distress all the things. So people are like, how can we don't do custom work? Because sometimes people want things perfect, and that's not how I roll. That's also like an unachievable goal. Nothing is actually perfect. That Everything is has some slight imperfection. I don't care what it is or who made it. The people that like, you know what I noticed? Like I was thinking about like home construction. Mm -hmm. People that do home construction, they're not perfect. Like if they're contractors. But they're really good about making it look mostly perfect unless you get up close. That's the... The trim and the paint guy, they come in and fix a lot of things. That's right, the carpenter. <laughs> and the carpenter of this house was the me, finish, so... The finished carpenter, his job is like m the most important at the end on all the millwork and trim. And, and then the painters come through and I think they do all the caulking. And we were all of those things. We wore all those hats for this house. Well, Zeb kept telling me when we were doing, he's like, I'll help you with it when I get done with this project. But he always had one more project. So it was like me trying to figure it out. And I'm just not skilled with the power tools. I can do an average job. Um, you guys are getting all the insider info of JRV today. I feel like that's all the time. This stencil has so much crusty paint on it. Also, I keep sliding. It's okay. Uh oh, we're we're round up here. We're round what? Up here in this corner, it's not wanting to go where I want this it. This is a lot of stencil. I should have used a bigger using a bigger brush. You could swirl it if you dry brush no, your stencil No, I feel like enough. if I swirl it, I'm gonna make a mess. So if your dog thinks somebody's at the door because I'm pouncing. I apologize in advance. 
I'm just using the bigger brush because I'm starting to lose patience with my project. Starting to lose patience? I told you I didn't feel good. What's Cody barking at? I don't know. Because there's nothing out there. Maybe you heard the little chihuahuas next door. Their bark is like so soft. Yeah, you can't. Sometimes even... I can't even hear it, but the dogs do, and then they want to get out because they want to bark at them at the fence line. All right, I'm almost done pouncing if that noise is annoying to you. All right, ta da. It's not perfect coverage, but you want it to look old. So I feel like I achieved that. Okay, now I need you to heat gun it so we can distress it. Okay. We're about five minutes out, guys. Thanks for hanging in here with us. What spring projects are you working on or planning? Are you talking to me? Oh, all the spring projects. Planting. <laughs> we got to go get the garden ready soon. I eventually, at some point, I need to paint more at the shop. Like, I have all those. I painted the door last year, but I got to paint the window above it, all the other windows, all the other doors. Fix the lighting, finish the cottage, just a few things. There's a really like bad window seal that we need to fix at the shop. I want to put an outdoor kitchen in the backyard here. All right, that's all dry. Okay, I'm about to distress and wax and we'll be done. Um, oh. That's fine. <laughs> Do you have the sandpaper? I could distress this and wax it. I have end sandpaper. Oh, there's another one over here. We're good. We're only three minutes over right now, about four. Are they going to see this where it's kind of streaky up here? Um, yeah, you might want to hit that again with some more or distress it super heavy. I just need the Fine, I'll just. The salt wash is not wanting to rub off with this DIY paint. Um, it dries pretty rock solid. All right. All right, this is where the texture comes in, where I stenciled over it. It's going to really give us some good age. And I go both directions with the distressing, against the grain and with the grain. Leslie says that tribal people always act. They add mistakes on perfect on purpose because only the creator is perfect. I actually love that. I would agree with that. I always tell people that imperfection is the human element. If you want perfect, buy something made by a machine. And then you're still not going to get perfect. Yeah. We just got a couch made by a machine and had to send three pieces back. In Dobbitsy. What happened to the thing we purchased in England? It is in the barn waiting to be installed in the cottage. Yep, still have it. We still have it. All right. Do you want me to clear wax this? Yep. Do you have a clear wax brush out or you only just use No, I don't. So this, the blue didn't really need sealer, but the crinoline does, and it will, um, it will dry lighter. Took off more than I wanted right here, which is fine. Oh, watch out oh. for that. Going stuff everywhere. Don't overwork your paint. You don't want to like get that sanding dust everywhere. The um, pigment in the Cottage color doesn't smear as much as like DIY paint, but you can have a problem if you overwork it.
is not quite dry. I probably should have used a bigger stencil brush to clear waxes, but this is what I had on hand. It's all right. Ta-da. Be Ooh. careful. I dropped it. I dropped here. it about six times. And it will be a little splotchy. Do I need to wax this too? This part that goes over the top? Sure. Sometimes when you wax, it'll make the DIY paint look a little translucent, like it'll make it look more streaky. Just let it dry. Don't freak out. Although I think this is where the face is going, huh? So a lot of this will be covered by the face. Yeah, I'm doing a heavy distress on these florals because the, the face would have been wiped with the glass quite a bit. She just said she re received her framed bird picture. Awesome. PJ, was it was it the ones that painted or was it just one that we framed? I can't remember. Somebody bought Zeb's picture. I don't think it was PJ. The one I it. painted the one with the the stencils. All right, I almost like there. You guys, we're gonna we'll clean the glass after. Or do you want to clean it now? Right now, I'm just gonna wax this. Oh, uh, Zeb, we need to before you wax that. You you need to fix that under there. That doesn't want to look good. Um, Here, there's a paint like uh, under that where that stencil. Where you tried to sand that off, but it you got a little aggressive. I there. think that's perfect distressing. Okay. But I will fix it if you don't like it. Thanks. There we go. Just heat gun that and be perfect. Not that I'm bossy or anything. Has less to do with bossy and more to do with opinions. <laughs> All right, well, while he's doing that, I'm gonna talk about cleaning stencils. This stencil has like 52 layers of paint on it. Some of it has the top coat, so that's gonna be a little tricky. But what I like to do is just get it um, really, really wet, put like some cleaner on it, whatever cleaner you like to use. And then I'll use like a stencil brush and on the bottom of the sink where it's flat, I will stencil brush off the paint. So be careful though, there's a, like, this one has a lot of little details. You do not wanna rip up or break your details. These, these are some of the thickest stencils on the market, but in something super detailed, you do need to be careful that you're not ripping off the little pieces. But that is a good way to clean them. Because what happens is the paint will start to change the crispness of the stencil because it'll build up around the little lip and it won't look the same. I really discovered that when, if you guys remember, I stenciled the, my fireplace hearth before we put it in the wood flooring that we just did. And as I got to the end of stenciling, the design you were losing was some missing of the flowers. a lot of parts. Like there were like little dots that it was missing because the the paint had caked up on my stencil. Oh, hmm. where's, I need more paint coverage on that. We need to stencil that with something. Oh. We're just been painting that center piece. All right, so going on with clear wax before I do the dark wax, um, that'll give me the control I need. It'll make the paint less porous because I'll already have clear wax on it. And then if I get dark wax where I don't want it, we can come back through and pull some of that out. I'm just here for the assist. 
I'm actually surprised at how quick my project was finished. It really did help that there was already such great texture on it. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to be too crazy to paint just because I mean, that, that fiberglass is going to hold that paint and suck it up really well. Okay. What do you want me to stencil on this? Um, something floral, like whichever one you want. Okay. got too many things too many tasks <laughs> over here you got a lot of a lot of stuff going over there right now your project is way more involved than mine i'm realizing um i use salt wash two colors of paint can you give me that stencil brush please and some stencils and dark wax now oh you need the stencil paint plate too my water try not to dip my paintbrush in my water glass Okay, clear, all clear wax, that's all now sealed up. The dark wax is also a sealer, so not, not a big deal if you just want to go dark wax. Just keep in mind when you're using a porous paint like the clay paint, the DIY paint, it's going to really soak down into that paint. So I'm offloading and we haven't really talked a lot about that. I don't know if Zeb talked about it earlier. I didn't. Today. You want to make sure that you offload your brush. If you ever have a problem when you're stenciling with it getting too goopy underneath, I'm going to have to clean that paint off, but there's the little middle part. Um, you're not offloading enough. It needs to be almost dry. So if it's still leaking underneath, offload some more. Keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. And eventually you'll figure out it's more, it's kind of like making bread. It's like a feel thing. Well, and you can practice It's hard for me too. to explain exactly how dry it has to be, but it needs to be pretty You'll dry. You'll get to a point where you can feel how the brush is pulling off the stencil. Mm -hmm. Or if you're like stencils lifting, you're way too wet. I'm sorry, I had to quickly get the paint off the edge because this is the cottage color paint. I'm just wiping off. Let's see. So let me heat gun that and clear wax this. Okay, I'm going to actually start... Wiping back. All right. Thanks, Caitlin. She needs to check out about 11.20. So we got like five more minutes of Caitlin. Okay. Because she got dropped. Well, I got about five more right minutes brush. here. That's not the white brush. Here it is. Okay. So my dark wax is really, my, my clear wax wasn't dry. My dark wax is really blending in with that, which is okay. We've got like a really grungy kind of look going here. Clear That's wax. A lot of grunge. Wait, I know you wouldn't. Gonna, I knew you weren't gonna like it. Jamie, here. Jamie likes here. taste one. I don't need that. I got one right here. Back with clear wax. Oh, we're already time again. Hold on. All right. Seven, I have a slight difference of opinion about how much dark wax is too dark. For a long time, I wouldn't even use dark wax. Now I love it. I use it a lot, but I'm still definitely more sparing than him. Okay, so, so I feel like you need to pull off it off because you got to the stenciling. Um, the stencil towel. is uh, subtle on purpose. Like I really wanted it to mostly go away. When you look at those old Mora clocks, a lot of that folk art is. It goes right, I'm away. trusting the process. You know what? This was just sitting in the garage, so I'm fine either way. Yeah. Well, and it is going to appear. A lot of times we do dark wax over like a blue, like this, or or a green. Over this yellow cream, you're going to really see it. Well, so keep that in mind. Well, it will soften up as the wax dries. Yeah. All right. I'm going to do this on one side, and then we're gonna. I'm going to let it dry a little bit before I put the whole clock back together. The funny together. thing is I say, you know, I'm like, oh, it's a lot of dark wax, but some of my favorite furniture refinishers Use do tons really grungy of dark. finishes, and I like it. I just got to be patient with the process. Anybody that knows me knows the patient isn't my forte. Are we dark waxing the inside or no? Because that's the inside. It's not really getting dirty. Um, I still need a regular wax it. I Here, do this, this do this semi clear now mixed with dark wax. There you go. That's good. Okay. So I just got dark wax kind of in the crack on this. You probably can see oh. because there's a little bit of dark wax on that. Because I already waxed all my pieces. And my pieces that are back there. Right, I'm going to bring this close. You want me to clean up some of this I'm going to bring this close in just a second. Are you so you, are you putting see. it together while we're live? We no, I'm going to put it together after. So you'll have to stay tuned. We'll post a picture of it. 
Um, when check back on the done. website, and I'll try to put it in Instagram stories and Facebook stories. Yeah, we'll, we'll and we'll probably post it in community on YouTube too, so everybody can see it. And because sometimes it's hard to get paint dry and wax dry and everything, all the little details done in an hour now slash over an hour video. Also, I will be using this blue some more. We're almost done. I'm almost down to the bottom. It's not that it's a bad color. I just like, okay, I want to switch to something new, but I still have this much paint. That's good. The cottage color goes a long way, especially in the darker shades. The lighter shades, you don't get as much coverage. Um, can I just, are we done with this situation? All right. Okay, we can be done with the video, and you can go back to being sick. I'm going to show them this. I'll sit and have a beverage while you finish your project off camera. Okay. So Here, we, we can kind of give them an idea. We went grungy with it, and I'm pretty happy with that. It's showing the texture. It's showing the brush strokes, which is what you would get on an old painted piece. They didn't is... have as good of brushes. Their paints were, like, mixed at home. A lot of them were doing, like, some sort of milk paint, so it crackled. That's what I kind of... Oh. Can okay, you show it to me a little bit? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Nope. Now it's broken. <laughs> That's how it's going to look like in there. We're going to put it back together. We'll get it back together. Oh. Yeah, I told you. That's all right. I can fix it. And then this side will get dark wax, too. You can kind of see it's up here. It's not broken. Here. It just needs to be put back on. I'll get the clear wax out and feather that in. All right. Don't you stress. All I finished. Waste not Wednesday. I got probably about 20 more minutes of putting this back together and waxing. And then it'll be all done. I do not think we charge enough for this clock. All right. I'll put that back together too. Don't touch all it. All right. Be sure to visit jamierayvidget.com for the paint products and these items. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY. And thrifting. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye, you guys.